Good morning. It's Mark again here, Weather Channel Live. Uh, this is actually my second channel. If you want to see my primary channel, well, it's just me. It is Weatherman Plus. Uh, link is in the descriptions. Everything you need to know is in the descriptions. Uh, good morning to you. This is the Weather Channel content for Saturday, August 15th. Uh, after they finish showing you uh, what they need to show you on Weather Channel, I'm going to go through what they're talking about. Matter of fact, I'm going to go a little further and show you the next two and a half days. It looks like the storms do clear up on the East Coast for you after this one that you see now races through. It's going to race all the way to North Carolina, Virginia, and even towards New York. That's why I want to show you more than uh, just one day. You need to see further. Uh, the one in the center right here by Lincoln that you see, it does pop a little bit of, of damage in winds, but it does dissipate pretty quickly. But I will go all through this when they're done. So good morning to you. God bless you today. I hope you have a great day today. And let me get you over to them. everyone. Welcome into AMHQ Weekend on this Saturday. I'm meteorologist Kelly Cass. Hi, I'm meteorologist Reynolds Wolf and Mother Nature has already made a huge stormy mess and Kelly, there are even more thunderstorms to pop up this weekend. In fact, take a look at this. A storm tracker captured this moment this moment when a funnel cloud started taking shape in the skies above the, the Cornhusker state of Nebraska. This happened just yesterday. Now, there were multiple reports of a funnel cloud here in Henderson during yesterday's severe storm, as well as reports of huge hail. And get this, Kelly, some of it actually baseball size, Kelly. Yeah, we have some funnel clouds and tornadoes out there, all modes of severe weather and including flash flooding, by the way. Lots of reports of that as well, especially in the Hickory, North Carolina area where a flash flood emergency has been in effect recently. So we do have a couple of pockets of severe weather everywhere you see right on this map. It could happen. Strong to severe storms producing more hail as well as some gusty winds, rain and thunderstorm activity along the east coast as well with dangerous rip currents for parts of the east as well. So be careful if you are heading out to the beaches here. Uh, your Sunday snapshot also featuring the heat, the dog days of August, right? You can tack on a few more degrees because the humidity across the southeast, record heat across the west, not quite the 117 Reynolds that we saw in Phoenix yesterday, but still another day in the one -teen teens. All right, Kelly, yeah, we go from those rising temperatures to the falling rain, the streets of Louisville looking like rivers on Friday as a storm dropped Massive amounts of rain on this part of Kentucky. Now, one person forced to abandon their SUV when it was overtaken by floodwaters. Parts of the city got more than a half inch of rain in just 24 hours. At, while nearby cities like Owensboro, for example, they had more than two inches of rainfall, and you see the effects there. Water piling up. All right, let's start with what's happening this hour. We've got those thunder boomers that are already cranking up. You know, a lot of times you see these severe thunderstorms that pop up during the peak heating hours of the day. That adds the instability that gives you a, a catalyst to provide some of the heavy rainfall. But forget that. You got it this morning already in the counties of Burke, Caldwell, and Catawba, cities of Hickory, Eichard, and Newton. Now, to give you your vantage point, you've got, uh, let's see, Mecklenburg County is right over here, and this is just northwest of Charlotte. This is going to be in effect until 615. Would not be surprised if we see these extended. Reports, do we have those? Heck yeah, we do. Look at this in Hickory. Reports of, of swift water rescues near Falling Creek and also the Snow Creek. Now, the time of the report was 3 o'clock in the morning. It's a little bit after in 308 or so. In Hickory, you got flooding over Springs Road northeast. Time of the report. Now, couple things to consider. Although these are the two reports that we have, I guarantee you, you've got a lot more of this happening around the community. And with this flash flood uh, going on in effect over the next hour or so, would not be surprised if we see the more. This is the channel really to watch right there. We're going to be seeing more of the focus of these storms. And sure enough, look at this. The flood alerts, well, at least in terms of the watch, they extend through portions of the Ohio Valley. What the heck is going on, especially right up here? It is called high elevation. It sure is. An orographic lift is an enhancer in terms of the, the intensity of some of the rainfall. However, out towards the coast itself, in spots like Norfolk, back over into Durham, right along Tobacco Road, you could definitely have, have uh, plenty of, of more rain there. We're not blowing smoke. Look at this. We roll forward from 7 o'clock in the morning, and we see the, the exodus of some of these drifting their way over towards the Delmarva, but we see the atmosphere just reload from Asheville right along the Blue Ridge Parkway up in Boone. Yeah, look at that up near Appalachian State. The state of things could be troubling in terms of the heavy rain that could be coming down. Then as we get into Sunday, things begin to, well, kind of cool down in a few locations in terms of the intensity of rain or but in terms of the intensity of the rain. But then we see build up in places like the Outer Banks and certainly more of it near Washington, D.C. and points south near Bull Run. Now, flash flooding. 
It is certainly going to be likely tomorrow, especially right along the Virginia North Carolina border in points uh, in, in, in the interior. So I'm thinking places, places like, uh, let's see, Richmond, Petersburg definitely could be compromised by the heavy rain that could be coming down through tomorrow morning. Kelly, let's send it back over to you. All right, check out this live view of it this morning. Kind of a murky sky overhead. Uh, we see some flashes of lightning over the North Georgia mountains. But right now we are looking at a period of drier weather for Atlanta, but still, it's already been a very wet summer for folks in Atlanta. We're nearly 10 and a half inches above average for rainfall this year. And today, people here will need to be on the lookout for more dangerous lightning all day into tonight. And the same story across many neighboring states as well. So a very cloudy, uh, kind of keeping temperatures down a little bit. Yesterday, we actually saw some cooler numbers, only in the 80s for a change. But still, we've got the humidity out there making it feel very unpleasant, very uncomfortable. And you can see those temperatures rise rising through the 80s as we head through the afternoon with a chance of rain and thunderstorms pretty much any hour of the day, whether it's the morning, afternoon, or evening. And it's not just Atlanta. We're tracking the showers and storms for Raleigh, down to Tampa, Miami as well, over toward New Orleans, especially during the afternoon and evening hours. Little Rock, though, it's going to be hot and dry for you. 94 degrees around the Lake of the Ozarks should be mostly dry day today. But if you are heading out to some of the lakes here in the Carolinas, whether it's Wiley or Norman, be prepared to seek shelter shelter and head to port quickly as we do see an abundance of storms really filling in on our future radar all across the Piedmont back towards Asheville the North Georgia mountains around uh, Lake Blue Ridge could be some slow moving thunderstorms dumping a lot of heavy rain in a short period of time and then we see those storms once again around Charleston Raleigh toward the Outer Banks and then things will tend to die down and quiet down as we have for the midnight hour and into early tomorrow morning before we fire those storms up again on your Sunday so overall we're talking about a lot of rain with these slow moving storms. They're not moving all that quickly. We already see some flash flood warnings going on in parts of Virginia. Uh, Virginia, again, looking at that chance for showers and storms on your Sunday and especially down towards Florida. Now, it will be a drier day tomorrow, though, for taking the boat out on Lanier or Alatoona tomorrow. 90 degrees, 88 degrees in Nashville. As we take a look at the rainfall, though, as I mentioned, these storms are slow movers, could put down a lot of heavy rain in a pretty short period of time. So the darker green indicates two to three inches. We bring out the yellow and we're talking three to five in some spots. And this is on top of already saturated ground. Look how much rainfall we've had since the start of August, especially in the wake of Isaias. We picked up a lot of rain across the Carolinas and Virginia and even back toward the Piedmont, North Georgia, Blue Ridge Mountains, seeing a lot of rainfall. So it's not like we need it here, Reynolds. Uh, no question about it. You know, when, when showers move slowly, the water has a potential of stacking up. And that's the reality in this location, parts of Minnesota on your Friday. You had streets and drivers in Sartell that ended up waterlogged. Cities close to this spot reported between two to four inches of rainfall. Meanwhile, in nearby Millerville, close to four and a half inches of rain were reported. And sure enough, I don't care where you happen to be, that is going to cause some problems. And that was the situation that people were waking up to. So waterlogged. If you're out to, if you're going out there and stepping on some of the lawns across the community, you feel like you're walking on a on a trampoline. I mean, mushy conditions out there. We have some dry air that is moving into places like Minneapolis, St. Paul, and back into Sioux Falls. But we see the bulk of the showers moving down to the Show Me State. We're showing you those for the time being. But we spin, we extend the view, and we've got. Let's count them out for a second. We've got one here. Got two. Wouldn't you know, three. Yeah, three spots where you have the chance of severe thunderstorms along parts of the I-25 corridor and points east. We've got these up towards the arrowhead of, of uh, let's see, Minnesota, and even like a little sliver of Wisconsin, too, and then across parts of the Great Lakes and into the mid-Mississippi Valley. All right, let's go into the future. This is the crystal ball, so to speak. We shake it up. Here's what's coming out. We see the rain showers begin to diminish, and then sure enough, they begin to pop up. Look at that. Yeah, some of these moving also across parts of Lake Michigan. Then <clears throat> we go to 7 o'clock in the evening. And we have some of these possibly producing some hail, could have some damaging wind at times. The, the key takeaway is that you've got a lot of areas here that are saturated. We don't need any more rainfall, but that could be on the docket for you, and that could cause some problems. Here are the, the players that we have. We have this area of low pressure that's way up in Canada, this boundary that's going to be moving this way. Hey, what the heck is this stuff? Well, that's some drier air, but what's ahead of it? Moisture that is moving in from the Gulf of Mexico. Collision course and where they come together combined with the available energy means that we could see some heavy rain spilling out.
Winds also veering with high could cause some of these storms to have a little bit of a twist to them. We refer to those as supercells. They can produce a lot of things, a lot of trouble too. Could be some rain, could be some hail, could be some damage and wind. And tornadoes can rule that out. And as we wrap it up in Chicago, <clears throat> nothing to clear your throat at. Look at this, a chance of storms all the way through with a mix of sun and clouds. So beautiful at times that sunshine could be one of the catalysts to help things pop up in terms of those severe storms. Be ready for it. Kelly, back to you. And they really popped up yesterday across the front range. We had funnel cloud sightings. We had hail. It was pretty big, especially in parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, down through the panhandle of Texas. Hail and high wind. Those were the primary threats, and indeed we saw that play out yesterday. Um, we we're taking a look at some of the reports here in Grenada. Two-inch hail in diameter. That was about 5 o'clock in the afternoon local time. And in the city of Earth, there's a city of Earth over here in the western parts of Texas. We had a wind gust to 64 miles per hour. And unfortunately, we've got the red on the map once again today. Now, it's going to be more of a marginal threat where you see that lighter shading of red. But up here into the front range, the eastern portions of Colorado, western plains, that's where we could really see those storms pop up and turn severe today. So here's a look at our future radar. So far, so good. The earlier you get out there, the better. Running your errands, doing any outside work. It's really going to be the afternoon where we start to see those storms really fire up here across New Mexico, around Santa Fe, Pueblo. And as we head toward the evening time frame, I know the Rockies are at home here in the Denver area. Looks to be okay. It's mainly the Easter, east of you in the eastern plains of Colorado, but then also in two parts of Kansas and Oklahoma, we could once again see some pretty big hail and some strong damaging winds enough to cause your power to go out. So be prepared for that. All right, Goodland, Kansas. We've got lots of lightning on the map here. Anywhere really after two o'clock through the evening hours, isolated in nature, but when they do pop up, they could be severe. And as we head for tomorrow, once again, focusing on areas of eastern Colorado, eastern New Mexico, all the way into the plains and parts of the Midwest, we could see some really rough conditions out there, especially for travelers, Reynolds, and some campers out there, too. A lot of RV travel going on this time of year. You really have to pay attention to the weather. No doubt about that. We're also going to pay attention to the tropics, where that's the topic, the tropics, and Wow, it is alive with activity. You see the Atlantic. We've got Tropical Storm Kyle. We also have Tropical Storm Josephine. We also have an invest. Holy smokes, look at the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, Pacific's active. Really has been brewing. No, no doubt. Water out there is bubbling. It's like a jacuzzi. And sure enough, you see the activity. Series of invest and also an area to watch. All right, let's unpack this. Let's go ahead and open up the suitcase. And here's what we got. We've got travels from Kyle. We mentioned Kyle. We also have Josephine. If you want some good news, the, the issue right now is that neither one of these are threatening the United States for now. But again, you always have to stay on your game. You always have to stay vigilant when it comes to the tropics. And sure enough, with Josephine, we've got winds at 45 miles an hour, pressure 1,005 millibars, moving to the west-northwest at 15 as the albatross flies roughly 310 miles east of the northern Leeward Islands. Where in the heck is this thing going? Well, as for now, it does appear that it's going to skedaddle and make its way a bit to the west-northwest, eventually moving through places like Bermuda. Our friends in Bermuda, be prepared as we get into, say, Wednesday and Thursday for increased cloud cover and enhanced surf in places like Elbow Beach. Meanwhile, we have got Kyle. This one is making its way into the northern Atlantic and hopefully off into history, but certainly something to watch as we roll forward in time. Kelly, back to you. And Reynolds, it's already been a pretty active hurricane season, and we're not even at the halfway point yet. That's why it's so important to be ready now. Here's a look at the essentials you need to have. All right, all they do is go through the, the normal hurricane package to wrap up. That's what I just turned off. So if you want to see a more thorough um, forecast of the tropics, all you got to do is go to my video I put up last night on my primary channel, Weatherman Plus. Again, links in the description. Uh, I did a more thorough of all those storms that are popping up. That way you can check and see what's going on. But ever since day one, I showed Josephine wasn't going to be much of anything. Now, I'm going to do this pop-up real quick in the center to show that it does go away and show the damage and winds that comes through that. You can see it bowing out a little bit right there, but it does go away. And then I'm going to show you what happens on the East Coast because the East Coast seems like a primary uh, thing that's going to be happening for the next 24 hours as well as a little bit in the Midwest. Now, I'm going to show it to you real quick, and then I'm going to play it for you while I do what's in my heart. And I'm going to read to you a little bit uh, from the Bible. Now, as you see the storms going through, you see it affects uh, North Carolina, Virginia. It's, it's going to go all the way into tomorrow where it goes towards New York. 
Uh, you see all that flooding. It's going to be a lot of flash flooding with this one is what's going to be the problem because y'all already heavy with with uh, water and a lot of y'all just got your power on. God bless y'all. I hope y'all are still okay from EC is. But you see it lingers uh, around Virginia for quite some time, especially in this center right here. This is the main area that I can tell that these two areas of where the flooding is really going to be from these storms because you can see this is just hours of heavy rainfall in the same spot and again uh, for tomorrow. Now let me show you what it is day by day real quick just so you can get a, a, a picture of what's going on with this. This is going to be some, some pretty bad flooding uh, for some of you. Some of you won't see the flooding at all. So it depends on pretty much where you at. Now this is uh, going into tonight at 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and then tomorrow is where it still happens for North Carolina, Virginia, and so on of the East Coast. And this big pocket right here is the main one that's dropping all this heavy rain and headed towards New York uh, for tomorrow. And a little bit of Boston, not much, but you will get a little bit of the weather. Uh, now let me play this for you so you can see it uh, all in slow motion so you can kind of see your area. I didn't show anything else popping up besides these parts of the states. Uh, let me back up Florida so Florida can see. I do not believe that Florida had much going on. Yeah, it all broke up. It all broke up on Florida. I got a little bit of Louisiana down here. So I will uh, include you as well. So that way y'all can see what's going on. God bless y'all today. I hope y'all really have a great day today. And make sure you subscribe to the channel because this channel is not going nowhere, guys. And like I said, my main channel is where I do just me uh, and, and what's really in my heart, which is, which is God. Which comes to what I want to say today. This is Psalms 32. Happy is the one whose revolt is pardoned, whose sin is covered. Happy is the man to whose account Jehovah does not put error and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wore out through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My life's moisture has been changed as in the dry heat of summer. My sin I finally confessed to you, and my error I did not cover. I said I shall make confession over my transgressions to Jehovah, and you yourself Pardon the error of my sins. On this account, every loyal one will pray to you at such a time only as you may be found. As for the, lo as for the flood of many waters, they will not touch him himself. You are a place of concealment for me. You will safeguard me from distress itself. With joyful cries at providing escape, you will surround me. Amen. I shall make you... Have insight and instruct you in the way you should go. I will give advice with my eye upon you. Do not make yourselves like a horse or mule without understanding, whose spiritness is to be curbed even by brittle or halter. Before, before they will come near to you, many are the pains that our wicked one has. But as for the one trusting in Jehovah, loving kindness itself surrounds him. Rejoice in Jehovah, and he be joyful, you righteous ones. And cry out joyfully, all you who are upright in heart. Amen. Thank you, God. We do appreciate everything you do for us. We do love you. Now, as you can see, this is going into 8 o'clock on the 16th in the morning. And this is where the heavy rains start to come in a little bit. Uh, it clears up for South Carolina and North Carolina for the most part after this does pass so i'm gonna go ahead and zoom on in so people uh in the northeast and new york area can see exactly what's going on with these storms and pinpoint the timing as well uh, this is starting at 12 30 a.m that's that's early early morning on the 16th and here's the rain that you're going to be getting but i tell you north carolina Virginia, especially Virginia, is getting some really heavy pockets of this weather. So if you're in those, those areas, please watch out for flash flooding. Because there definitely will be some. I mean, they got it a flash flood watch. But I tell you what, this storm right here 
has been there for hours, if not a day or so already. So that's a slow moving sucker because it's already eight o'clock in the morning and it's just now getting towards northeast. Now, as far as it going to New York, it looks like it don't go heavy inland, but this is, of course, uh, another day or so out. So it really loses accuracy after 24 hours. Uh, after three days, it, it, it's really undependable as far as accuracy. You can get an idea, but you really don't know uh, for sure until it gets closer. And it looks like it does stall some more. This is 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and it is taking its sweet time moving across. So definitely watch out for the flash flooding over in the peninsula. That's not going to be a joke. And then this one storm pocket right here is slowly just traveling, and this is hours going by, but it looks like it is dissipating. So that's a good thing. Now, it looks like it barely misses New York with the, with the bulk of it, which is great. I'm sure you don't need any more of this flooding rain. It's, it's not a good thing because... Again, it could cause more power outages. And that's the last thing y'all need in the Northeast. Now, there will be some winds with this off land. I did show that in my forecast last night. Uh, but the winds will leave with as Kyle leaves. It will follow behind it, as well as Josephine will follow behind it as well. Uh, and I did see something else coming up uh, right past Puerto Rico with tropical storm strength with 10-meter winds. So we have to see what becomes of that. It's still a little too far away. But that is your weather in a nutshell, guys. God bless y'all today. I do appreciate y'all taking the time and watching the video. Uh, if you can do me a favor, give it a like, give it a share, help the channel grow. Because we're back and we're not going anywhere.